Hello and good afternoon. So welcome to Hintsa's remote webinar. My name is Pekka Pohjakallia from Hintsa Performance and I will be spending the coming half an hour or, or so with you and discussing about how to make the most out of the remote work and maybe some practicalities of the webinar to start with. There's a Q&A button if you kind of move your mouse towards the bottom of your screen and you can ask questions using that button. I will address the questions in the end of the webcast and, and, and we can have a kind of a semi-automatic discussion that way. And uh, after this webcast, we will send in you an email of a blog article that I've wrote about exactly this topic so that you can get the highlights and the main points that we are making during the session uh, even afterwards. So no need to make, make notes or anything like that if you, if you feel like. But let's, let's kind of start the discussion and let's start the, the topic. What, what I was thinking that when we were making this, this webcast that, that actually remote work might be a new normal. I don't want to paint any kind of a horrible black pictures of, uh, of you know, that uh, uh, the quarantines and, uh, and, and, and likes are, are, the, are the future for us to see. But working outside of the office could be the new normal. Many of us have used cafeterias or worked at home uh, in, in the past already, but somehow I have a feeling that we haven't changed our ways of working to fit with the new, new, new location. So we kind of try to work the same way as, as if we were in the office. And, you know, remote work has some particular points that make it diff different. And I hope that this webinar will give you some ideas how to be as productive as possible with remote work and also flourish as an individual as a result of uh, remote work. The first point what I would like to make is that uh, the principles of the remote work are the same or the similar as the work in the office. You know, we want to get certain things done, we want to meet our goals, we want to serve our customers, we want to be good managers and good employees regardless of the connection or regardless of the location. And, and we are, in the end of the day, we are people, regardless of where we are. So we, we just need to pay some extra attention to the fact that we don't see another person. We have to kind of pay attention to some of the subtleties of communication. We can't read between the lines as easily when we are talking about remote meetings and remote working as when we are in the same place. But on the other hand, that might be an opportunity. I think that regardless of whether we are talking about remote meetings or we are talking about uh, physical uh, meetings or work, this is the point that has created lots of discussion lately. We all have rhythms of our days and our lives, but we very rarely pay attention to the rhythms when we are talking about cognitive performance. When I was an entrepreneur a few years ago, uh, we made a big study in Finland. We interviewed 1,500 knowledge workers, asking questions about, asking questions about their work. And we asked questions that, have, do you realize or do you feel that you have a personal biorhythm? Basically that, that you work better in the mornings or evenings. 72% of people said that they recognized the rhythm. However, when we asked the following question, which was, do you modify your daily rhythm based on that finding? 73% said no. So we kind of know that we are morning persons, evening persons, but we decide to, to do nothing about the thing. But the studies are saying that our cognitive performance is varying about 20% during the average day. So actually the rhythms are making a difference. If you look at the kind of a classical hard workers um, model or behavior, we call them early birds. You know, the society is funny. It is rewarding early birds in business life and in working life. So we are saying that the early birds are catching the worm or the early birds, people who come to the office early are the hardworking people. And people who kind of want to sleep in and come a little bit later are lazy. Well, interestingly enough, if you, your kind of a personal rhythm 
is on the later side, so that you are an evening type. Social life is about evenings, working life is about mornings. Yet, scientists are saying that we can find a thing called chronotype in, in all of us. Chronotype means that are we morning persons, do we cognitively function better in the morning or in the evening? Studies say that about 20% of us are early birds, so mornings are the better. For morning persons, our cognitive performance is peaking in the morning, so we get creative stuff done. Kind of a result that happens, whether we like it or not, there will be a valley. So that our performance will dip at a certain point, and then it will rebound, not to the peak level anymore, but quite a bit above the valley. So what do the early birds easily do in the office life? And I would claim in um, remote work as well. We come to the office or we come and start the, the, the remote day, we pour a cup of coffee and what do we do first? We check our emails. And are emails for the early birds the thing to do because they are in the peak of their performance? Maybe not. Maybe they, maybe they should think about what to do first in the morning. Well, night owls then, I'm clearly an owl, 20% of us are. And for me, that means that in the, in the kind of a morning, I'm in a rebound mode. So I get stuff done, but that's not my creative peak time. So I should probably do what I was complaining about uh, early birds doing earlier. So I could take a cup of coffee and do my emails, a job or task, which is not taking my full cognitive performance. That is followed again by the valley, and then my peak is in the afternoon. I tried, and this is kind of a funny or, or kind of ironic, that even though I'm speaking to you about these rhythms right now, what happened to me when I was writing a blog article of this topic, I tried to start to write it at 10 a.m., which I knew is a mission impossible. I, I don't get anything creative done before 4 p.m. I'm in a lucky situation though. My daughters are grown up that they have moved away from home. So I can adjust my working hours pretty much the way I want. So what I typically do in the morning, I, yeah, I will sleep a little bit later. I will check my emails maybe home and then I come to office. I do things that require socializing. And then if I have something hardcore to do, I get that done in the afternoon. So in the three phases, we, whatever our peak period is, we should pay attention that we do the focused work, we do the work that requires analysis, and we have the highest productivity during the peak hours. During the valley, we should kind of uh, take our rest, maybe lunch break, take time for recovery, and maybe also for reflection. And during the rebound phase, we would do the menial task and tasks that require switching. Well, if you're in an open office, switching basically means that you communicate and you, you kind of uh, do your project management with your uh, co-workers. But very rarely, as said, we pay attention to the phases. Second point would be that it's important to start your work in the working day in a way or another. If you think about your normal working day, you come to office. What do you do? You wake up, you brush your teeth, you go to take a shower, you have your coffee, you wear your working clothes, you commute, and then somehow your mind is primed that now the work starts. It starts for me somewhere during my commute, my mind moves away from my private uh, thoughts and my private life to my working life. And when I'm in the office, I'm ready. So what we easily do when we are in the home alone, we just somehow drift to work. You know, we wear our pajamas the whole day, we kind of drink uh, liters of coffee, and, um, and somehow, you know, there is no clear start. So one idea could be that when you have a remote day, start that with the routine. Make a point to yourself that the work is starting. What that routine could be? That routine could be, for example, that, well, first of all, don't wear your pajamas the whole day, but work, uh, sorry, uh, dress for work. Maybe you have a work around the block, kind of a creating a, a artificial commute. If it's raining, take the stairs up and down in your apartment building. Uh, prepare your coffee. If you are into it, you might uh, 
meditate a little bit or kind of have a mindfulness moment or, or you go for a run. I was jealous, listen, jealous listening to my colleague this morning who said, well, it was a fantastic day at the, at the home office. Before my working day, I, I went for a uh, bicycle uh, ride and then I did a sm uh, light workout at home. I was jealous because I, I'm not the guy who can do that. But he did it and he said that he was ready for the working day because he kind of uh, had, the, had the routine. Or maybe you just go through your list of what I want to achieve today um, before you start work. But the important point was that create a routine that will trigger your brain to be there for work. Then we can talk about place. And uh, again, building on the previous point, when I said that, you know, easily at remote work, your kind of work is, how would I say, conquering the whole home and the whole life. So it, I, was, I was mentoring a, a, a gentleman from, from London and he lived an, an one and a half hour train ride away from from the uh, city of London where his office was. And obviously he was uh, working a lot from home. And he said that he got all the time complaints from his wife that, you know, honey, you do nothing but work home. And we started to discuss that what could help this situation, that how could, you know, the peace come back to his relationship. And then we agreed that he will dedicate a certain spot of his house to, uh, uh, to work. He, fortunately had a spare room and he built his remote office there. We all can't have a, that possibility. We all can't have a own, own room for remote work, but maybe it's a kind of a corner of your dining room table where you, when you work, you are there. And, and when you are not working, uh, you can be in the other parts of the house. So your mind again is making a difference between work and leisure. And also, you know, pay attention to the ergonomics. We easily start to work on couches and, and, and create neck pain and, and whatever. You can build your own standing table by, well, finally using your encyclopedia that you haven't been using for the past 15 years and pile the books and have your computer on top of it. If you feel like it, buy a, a screen and, and a separate keyboard to make your home office feel more like uh, the real office. And also eliminate the distractions while you're working. So one thing could be that you are, if, if Netflix is your temptation, you know, put your kind of a, put your remote control on the shelf and make a decision that it can be taken away from there only after the working hours. So no peeking into what's going on on TV. Or if you're a person who is kind of a loving to clean up the house. So pick the place at your home in a way that you don't see the mess around of you. Or maybe you schedule in your daily schedule a slot for, um, uh, for cleaning the house. And as I discussed with my colleagues uh, earlier today, if you have a three-year-old who is um, full of energy or a school student who is not going to school right now because of the uh, quarantines of the coronavirus, they might be running behind of you and uh, in the screen when you have a remote com a call conference. First of all, it's less than optimal. I accept that and we are in a special situation. But on the other hand, we are also more tolerant right now. Having a, your toddler in the picture every now and then so that your colleagues can see it, it just kind of gives a piece of humanity to the discussion. Yes, it takes a little bit away from your concentration, but we are living a special time, so we can't optimize them uh, completely. So our company's founder, Dr. Hintz, used to say that optimize, don't maximize. Try to kind of find the little things that make your remote workplace as good as possible. You can't make it perfect anyway, because home is, after all, a place for many other things than only work. Then, uh, as a fourth point, I was reading and, and I also met um, uh, Harvard Business School professor Teresa Amabile a few years ago, and she made a big study of what motivates knowledge workers in the best way. And she was saying that it's the small wins. So basically by small wins, she meant that people do things and stuff gets done. She had, uh, 
studied 1200 knowledge workers who were keeping a journal of what they do during their days. And as a result, that what was the most motivating thing, she found out that these small wins were the answer. And wh why it was worth of Harvard Business School professor to do that kind of a study is that because in, in big companies, often what we think is that we do world-class stuff, so we don't pay attention to small things. But also in cognitive work, that is a little bit different than physical labor. Let me give an example. You are at your summer place and you are chopping wood. You spend the whole day chopping wood. And what is the result? It's a pile of wood, which is quite satisfying. It would be quite unfortunate if you were chopping wood for the whole day and there was no pile. But that's easily what happens with us in cognitive work. You know, we, our results are intangible which means that if we don't pay special attention to those results, we don't feel that anything gets done. So very simple advice by Professor Amabile is that in the morning, in the normal days while you're commuting, but in, in, a, in a remote day, maybe during your morning routine, write a short list of things that you want to get done today. And if that includes that you want to, for example, wash laundry, that's fine. Put it in the list. Because what we discussed also with my colleague earlier today was that actually, while you'd kind of uh, save about an hour in commuting and honestly half an hour with chit-chatting with your colleagues, you suddenly have more time for your working day. So you can do household things if those are in, uh, giving you energy. So make a list what you want to get done today follow the list and what, when you are uh, finishing the day, check your list and tick the boxes. And actually ticking the boxes will bring the extra motivation to you. I did things, I got stuff done. Even though I was not at work, I got stuff done. And in the same way, as I was saying that you should have a morning routine, you should also have a kind of leaving from the office routine in the end of the work, uh, remote working day. Basically meaning that you close the books so that the, the work doesn't just kind of a conquer or sneak into your life for the whole evening so that you don't do anything but think about work. Honestly, that happened to me last week when I decided to stay home um, uh, for, for three days. You know, the, the middle of the day, middle day Thursday for me was that I started like 9.30 in the morning and I, I realized finishing 8 in the evening. Where I was super productive? Not at all. But, you know, I just got the burden of thinking about work, but nothing got done. On Friday, I had a very clear list what should be done, essentially this webcast to be ready. So I was way more productive having this list with me. As a fifth point, it's, it's more about kind of agreeing uh, with your team how remote work is at your place. First thing, which is is bothering me quite a bit is, is that many HR directors to whom we are discussing or with whom we are discussing are saying that, you know, we need to be sure that people work when they are not at the workplace. And I was like, are we still there? You know, are we still in the place that we need to kind of uh, peek behind the shoulder of each other that what that job gets done? Um, Les LeBoc, who was a, <coughs> The HR director for Google said once that, you know, if you have a comfortable feeling of how much trust and uh, freedom you have given to your, your, your co-workers, you haven't gone far enough. Basically saying that we need to kind of learn in this remote work era, the kind of extreme trust. People are working in our company because they want to get stuff done. But when there is no natural way of how to work remotely, we are so used to this physical proximity, we need to be explicit about those. We need to be kind of a creating ways of working uh, for ourselves. Uh, it depends a little bit of the culture of a company, whether you write them down. Because some people like that we have this remote working policy and we have a team norms and we have rules of engagement and they are fine with this. For some other companies, 
it's they don't they don't like they feel it that well grown up shouldn't be given kind of orders or kind of a, uh, algorithms that this is how I do my day. That is the thing to discuss. That is the thing to kind of agree together with the team that we want to embrace remote working and this is how we are going to do it. And by the way, that can be done remote. Their agreement. If you look at the team leader's role, if you're a leader, I think that you should be remembering that we focus in business, even during these tough times. There's a lot of talking about coronavirus right now, and I'm, I'm kind of a, it's super severe situation, but at the, at the same time, we should, start the, we should start to focus on what's on hand, how we kind of grow and keep our business steady during difficult times. We should focus on clarity and people. So first of all, for the, for the manager, we, we need to be more available than, than before because there are no those serendipitous moments in the office where we just happen to meet. So when your team member is calling you, answer the call. That's part of your job. Check in what you're using whatever system you decide to use so that people know that you are there and, and you, you kind of do stuff and you communicate the positive outcomes and, and next step that we are taking. Be clear, without the human connection, needs of, need of clarity is even higher than in normal days. So we need to be clear that what we do next, what are the next steps, because we can't ask the question by the coffee pot. Trust, I already mentioned, that we have to be able to trust each other. And trust can be helped by having very clear goals uh, and very clear targets that we are having. So we are going towards the goal. And finally, over-communicate. A, uh, a communications leader that I respect very deeply said to me once that, well, Pekka, you know, when I was disappointed that some team didn't quite understand what I was meaning, she was saying to me that, well, Pekka, you know, if you haven't repeated the message 17 times, you, you shouldn't think that people actually got your point. So we need to over-communicate things, not with the same words, but if there are kind of golden topics that we want to follow, we, we repeat and repeat and repeat until everything is crystal clear. Right now, we have so good possibilities to work remotely. You know, I started my career in early 1990s. At those times, it wasn't even possible to send an attached file in the email system. Well, all the companies didn't even have an email. How would you have worked remotely then? There was no way. I have picked a few logos there and there are multiple of them, but let's take an advantage of um, technology. There are lots of video systems like this one. We are using a video system to broadcast this information. Let's use that. And I have noticed also in our company that for some reason people have a, a, a tendency to switch the camera off they probably are afraid that they have a bad hair day. But you know, especially in a situation where they, we don't have so often a, a human connection, let's keep the video on. Let's think about the location that where, where, where we have the video conferences, if possible, so that we have good lighting, peaceful background, you know, um, no kind of open covers and, and you know, uh, drying exercise clothes in the, in the backdrop but we make it kind of look professional. If we use instant messaging systems like Teams or Slack or whatever, you know, let's make channels there for, uh, for connecting in, in a kind of an informal way. If we have to-do list systems, let's use to-do list systems for sharing our tasks to each other. And there's project management that's kind of a bottom, there's a logo of a, of a tool called Trello, which is a tool where you can follow how the tasks are processing in your pipeline. So you know that stuff is happening. But you know, in addition to the, using the tools formally, and by the way, what we try to do in our company, we try to use instant messaging for all the internal communications. Let's use email for kind of formal communications and, and towards our external partners, because instant messaging is more closer to the kind of normal human communication than email. But let's do kind of a continuous uh, check-ins so that, you know, we have a place where we can just say hi 
send a nice cat video or whatever the uh, the uh, the kind of a humoristic or kind of a warming thing is what i mean by remember the value of a water fountain or maybe it is a coffee pot in finland is that we have lots of discussions in the office by the water fountain having having a cup of coffee how could we create a similar environment uh, to remote meetings these hashtags means in this case that you have your instant messaging tool where you have a channel for example what uh, to water fountain uh, encounters or as my colleague katrina today did she invited us to have a remote lunch together so we have a lunch meeting using a video sounds weird doesn't it but you know in these days it's nice to see your colleagues in an informal setting even more weird was when we had a christmas party and i was somehow arm wrestled to perform there uh, i was having my my guitar practice with my my colleague mikko over a skype meeting so we were playing guitar with 100 miles distance between us it was making us closer friends even though it felt a little bit funny in the beginning if you look at the daily rhythms there's a very exciting study and you will have a link to that in the in the, in the blog article that you will receive later by swedish psychologist called ericsson who was studying this what he called deliberate practice he was saying that even the most productive people can't focus more than four hours a day in in a proper way and that even happens in one hour chunks so what we would kind of need to do is that we we should kind of plan our day in a way that it has a rhythm it has a rhythm of work it, it has a way to safeguard those four good hours it has it includes breaks because easily at remote work you start to forget about the breaks it might have physical exercise during the breaks and you can do your household stuff if you will it has a break for lunch it has break for communication so there's a rhythm and it's not kind of a kind of a big uh, jellyfish of uh, of uh, of work and what i encourage you to think that what are your four priceless hours regardless of whether you are remote or, or physical meetings by the way so what are those hours where you really need to focus how do you safeguard that if nothing else i managed to do four hours of good work how do you do that where do you plan them my colleague nora and i'm super jealous about this method of hers it's a very simple method and I'm, I'm i'm failing always to do that she is kind of a using her calendar and blocks their uh, blocks of what she calls deep work so they are calendar appointments which are protecting nothing else to come and overtake the place of deep work what happens to me typically is that i have those blocks but then if my, our sales director sends me a, a interesting meeting request i go there and i don't protect you know the, the the kind of deepest and most productive work so we should start to pay attention that we are on the driver's seat not all those triggers that we get from outside work and when i said that we can have breaks we can exercise even 10 minutes at the time you will get the possibility to kind of stay fit you know i think that right now all the all the gyms have already kind of uh, uh, posted ways to uh, train at home my daughter's cheerleading squad is having the video uh, high intensive uh, interval training exercises on video and here in my picture my colleague Moritz is doing his seated row with the uh, elastic band you have so many possibilities to you keep yourself fit even if you don't live in the house so don't let this kind of a strange situation and remote work to become the excuse of not exercising and when it comes to focusing some of us use the pomodoro technique again i admit this feels sometimes a little bit artificial or naive if you will but actually it works first of all the name pomodoro comes from italian word for tomato and, and tomato comes from the thing that in the old days 
you had these kitchen timers which looked like tomatoes and they were basically timers that when you boil your eggs. But the Pomodoro technique goes in the following way. You set your timer, be that your smartphone or your kitchen timer or whatever, to 25 minutes. During those 25 minutes, you focus on only one thing. And, and when the timer is alerting, you stop and have a five minute break. Empty your mind, do something else, and then, you know, re ring in five minutes, and then you have your second Pomodoro, your second 25 minutes. And after three or four of these 25 minute batches, you have a longer break. And you might think that this is not actually uh, working, or this is kind of funny, Go and try it because quite often when we are in the office we have issues in keeping our attention focused while you are focused on one thing only you will see that actually you are so much more productive than when you are re responding to all the alerts it's worth trying and also remember eating because easily what happens when you are home you can eat whatever you eat, leftovers, your meal times are, uh, are slipping. Create a rhythm to this also, so that you have a meal time, you have your good breakfast, you have a lunch, which is proper lunch. Maybe you go out if that's still possible and where you, where you are living. And make sure that you, know, you follow the plate model of, of good eating. And, and we will be posting something about nutrition later on in, in the hints of websites. But, Keep the rhythm of, of good eating, have your snacks, and make sure that you take decent breaks. So if you typically have a lunch hour uh, in the office, you take, say, 30 minutes for lunch, take that home too, because that will take your mind away from your business uh, um, issues and, and kind of clears your thinking, and then you are more, much more productive again when you get back to business. And finally, you know, this gives an opportunity for you to go playful. So we are so used to our habits and our processes and the ways of working in the office that we never try anything new. Now you have an opportunity that you work remotely. Should I try something else? Should I start my mornings differently? Should I find a way to focus? Should I find a new way of um, time management? Or would I kind of uh, invite my colleagues for a remote brainstorming over a video conference service? Or, or pick your thing, but, but brainstorm a little bit. But is there something that you never kind of, uh, that, or you always wanted to try, but never had the kind of courage to do that? So try it. I'm pretty sure that you know that because you have become so much more productive when you are kind of, you don't have to commute and you don't have to, uh, um, be in the kind of ad hoc meetings, you have time to try new things. If I want to summarize uh, what we were discussing past, past half an hour, I think that simulate the kind of a way of how you work in your normal working days in the office. Try to make your days as productive as possible because you, as said, you know, you save the commuting time, you save time for kind of ad hoc meetings. You have a lot, a lot of time that you can do. Focus on your accomplishments. Make a list what you want to do. Assign priorities. Then establish the team norms or whatever is the right way or the kind of your favorite wording for that. But, but think about how you as a team work uh, at, in remote. And make the remote day a real working day. That's your kind of a thinking. It's not that I stay home, but no. I have a super productive day today, but you mind the limits so that you don't let the working day kind of uh, uh, go longer or start earlier, but you make, make a real rhythm. Take advantage of the different possibilities that you have in a, a, at remote. You can do whatever you like during your breaks, not like in the office, taking a nap. I mean, by the way, I have asked so many times when I give a lecture, that how many people are taking regular naps during their, their working hours, and people will start to laugh at me. But you know, there are lots of studies which say that 15 to 20 minutes naps are actually helping you with creativity and productivity. So why not, why not to do that? Utilize the opportunity and build your own rhythm. Maximize your productivity and also maximize your energy after hours. Because when you're productive during those hours you are working, 
you can be much more of yourself after working hours. And finally, stay in touch. Uh, don't become a hermit. So you're staying at home in, the, in, in the modern days doesn't mean that you're alone. I'm looking at my daughters who are uh, a little bit over 20 years old. What, one thing they don't do at all, what I did when I was a kid, they don't uh, make a phone call. They find emotional proximity with their friends, even using a, uh, using a WhatsApp or Snapchat or what are they. So it's possible to be there with your friends and your colleagues. And I would give you a challenge to you that uh, think about it. Design your own, your own best possible remote day. Think about how your day would look like and even draft it on a paper or on your tablet, if you will, that I would like that these ingredients are, are in my day and do something about it.